Hello, Tech Pros, episode 177. Be more selective about the information that you choose to consume. Second one would be um, make sure that you are um, either uh, getting the insight from it or you can create some insight that someone else can consume on top of that. Welcome to the podcast where I chat with professionals who are getting the job done using technology seven days a week. Each week we start with Motivation Monday. Tuesday is about productivity, Wednesday, leadership, Thursday, technology, Friday, people in communication, Saturday, entrepreneurship, and Sunday, being unplugged. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to introduce our featured guest today, Theo Priestley. Happy Tuesday, Theo. Hey, happy Tuesday, Chad. Are you uh, prepared to be productive? Uh, I certainly am. I have all the tools around me. Awesome. Fantastic. Theo Priestley is the CEO of Chronicle, a content discovery and collaboration platform. Priestley has a wealth of experience in senior positions at software companies and advisory roles working with diverse startups such as Cupenya and Nova Quark, which is developing the E3 hit duo universe. Priestley is very active in the startup community, mentoring within UK and US accelerators. Theo, thank you so much for joining me on Hello Tech Pros. Uh, you know, I read these bios and I, I kind of, as I was reading yours, I started feeling a little bit uncomfortable, like <laughs> saying just your last name over and over, right? Because <laughs> I, I prefer to keep it a little casual here and maybe I should have done a little bit more editing on uh, on the bio that came in from your, from your PR folks who are awesome folks and they helped us get the schedule. It's fantastic. But as I'm reading it, I'm like, it's it sounds kind of like, uh, remote and like very formal, like Priestley has a wealth of experience. Oh, it's I know. It's just Theo. Hey, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I prefer uh, yeah Theo to uh, Master Priestley or 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 Overlord Priestley. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's just keep it light. <laughs> cool, man. So, um, dude, you've you're you're in uh, a lot of companies. You're advising a lot of companies. Maybe before we get into all the fun stuff of productivity tell us about this video game uh duo dual universe that you're uh, you're advising uh nova quark on yeah sure um so uh, nova quark is a, a french video games company um and they just launched a, a kickstarter campaign for uh, dual universe which is uh, essentially uh the best way to describe it is star, star citizen meets um minecraft so it's a single shot, what they call as a single shard universe, which is everyone is in the same sandbox. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so there's no, you don't get segregated into zones or there's no instancing that limits the number of players that are allowed in one world. It's basically everyone, everyone on one planet and one universe. And the goal is to basically um, uh, build communities, build everything together together. Um, in this world, um, it's fully editable. Uh, players can make anything they want. Players drive the um, the economy within the game as well. So it's player driven, player led. Um, it's fully editable. It's an open world, um, and in some ways, it differs from Star Citizen in that regard because Star Citizen offers scripted missions and things mm -hmm. like that. Whereas here, uh, it's really up to you what you want to do uh, and what you want to build. Um, and they're doing quite well on, on Kickstarter. So it only launched eight days ago and we're kind of um, two thirds of the way through our funding already. So um, it's, it's looking quite good that it's going to it's going to be built. Man, that's that's incredible. Congratulations on on such a strong Kickstarter launch. And uh, maybe when it goes live, we're going to have to have somebody from the Nova Quark team to come on and uh, on it on maybe a Sunday being unplugged episode, which is about family and friends and gaming and, and all the things that have absolutely nothing to do with work. And we can just geek out on uh, on video games. That'd be cool. Cool, man. So today is Productivity Tuesday on Hello Tech Pros, and it's all about, you know what, we want to be that pace setter. We want to be that person who is just rocking and rolling and, and getting more things done uh, than 
other people think that people are capable of, right? We, we, we just want to do it all. We want to get it all done. But you know, Theo, sometimes we're not getting it all done. Sometimes we're struggling, man. The struggles are real. And uh, we are completely unproductive at times. So if you don't mind, could you share us a personal story of a time when you were completely unproductive and kind of set us up of where you were, what you were doing, what you were working on, what were you know, your goals, what were you trying to get done? And then we'll go through like, what were the obstacles and roadblocks in the way of your productivity? Oh man. Um, <laughs> I have so many stories. <laughs> um, you know, I've spent a good few years, um, uh, on freelance, uh, consulting projects, um, as a project manager, managing projects or being part of the team, um, uh, in a larger program of work. And the thing that, that they really kind of irks me is, um, is when you have to stop moving forward in order to document to the nth degree a lot of things that you are intending to do, have done. Um, and it's usually driven by really heavy management style project processes. Um, so the, a lot of things that I've come across in the past are, are like prints to um, rather than agile. So very driven from a waterfall approach where um, you can't move forward in a project unless you have something documented and then it's signed off and then it's it's revised and then change logs and things like that. And I find mm. that those are those are when I'm at my least productive, I guess, because I'm a guy who likes to roll up his sleeves and just get stuff done. And I find being mired in those kind of processes where well, we all have to face them, but when there is uh, when there is no end in sight or when um, when the person managing the process expects everything to be done according to the process and as rigid as possible, then then that kind of sort of slows everyone down. And, it, and it, I guess it demoralizes people as well when they have no leeway to be either creative or find ways around the process that actually improve the work and improve the productivity. Dude, you are preaching to the choir today, brother, because <laughs> I so much feel that energy that you're putting out here because uh, I'm a I, I'm a maker. I just want to experiment. I want to get things done and I want to talk to people and I want to I want to see what resonates with them and I I, I want this to be fluid and, and dynamic. And that's just kind of the way that I work. And so in those environments, dude, where I have been forced to document everything to the nth degree like before during and after the process it's like it makes me not even want to do it it's like okay if i <laughs> if i sign on for another project then i know it's going to be like two works worth of software development or two you know a month's worth of actual work and it's going to be like feeling like years of my life taken away from just documenting everything and, and trying to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. So, and I know there's a ton of my audience members that we've talked to uh, that feel the same way, right? That they're, uh, <laughs> they just want to create and they want to do, and yeah. they want to, they want to build and they want to be productive and see things get accomplished and see things shipped and, uh, deliver value to the customers. And you can't do that if you're constantly like tweaking on the documents. Yeah, could you imagine doing this podcast and we're emailing each other uh, written statements to sign off on? <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, and and now like six years later, we will agree to the terms and conditions <laughs> of the format. And Chad is now reading paragraph three, section two point zero four, that says, "Theo, what do you think?" Oh God, that just it breaks my brain just thinking about it. Yeah. Cool. So, um. In these positions, like what, when you have to do that, I mean, when you have to do it and you're trying to pay the bills and you're struggling and you don't get the, the chance to make the rules, you're playing in somebody else's sandbox, it kind of sucks to be you, but you have to do it, right? You have to play along and do the thing. So when you're in those positions where you're struggling and you want to be more dynamic, you want to implement a more agile methodology, um, you know, let's just have some... Let's just have some quick like overview, like user stories. What do people want? And let's start iterating on them and evolve as we go. Like what can we do in those rigid environments to try to have a little bit of sanity and a little bit of experimentation, but at the same time deliver the same type of uh, documents that the that the overlords want us to deliver? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I should really admit to this, but I kind of cheat. And... Um, 
So you can do uh, do it in a number of ways. One is obviously um, if you work on from project to project, you build up a library of stuff that you've done in the past, and and you can draw on that. Um, I'm you know I call it a kit bag almost where you 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 some might call it baggage from the past, um, but it's a kit bag to me because it's stuff that you've clearly poured your heart and soul into before um, to make a project work, and it kind of lends you. It gives you a template to to build on things really quickly, so you're never kind of sort of stuck um, and and feel like you make no progress. So there's the kit bag that you bring with you, but then there's also um, finding people like minded in the project or the organisation who are willing to, I guess, put in a couple of extra hours and run with proof of concepts for of um, different ways of achieving the same result. Um, and then going and proving that it works and then showing it that it works. And then hopefully the, the powers that be um, understand that, um, you know, there are different ways that are more efficient ways and they basically uh, adopt it at the end. That's the, that's the end goal. So it's, there's a little bit of more of hard work at the start, um, but ultimately if you can prove that there are efficiency gains to be had by doing something in a better way, um, then it, it's worth the extra graft. Dude, I, lo- I love that story, Theo, because uh, I actually implemented uh, agile methodologies and scrum methodologies in several big Fortune 100 organization um, projects where they, where they had you know their change controls, they had their project management structures, they had everything in the waterfall, right? Everything that the way that they needed to do it um, from like a governance perspective. And then inside that, like once we got to the execution phase, it's like, okay, now we're going to tear apart this document. We're going to kind of, yeah, we're going to kind of use it and kind of throw it out the window. And we're going to run like mini scrums inside of the overall execution of the overall project. And the first thing we got to do is I got to find like three people that really buy into this idea and who are going to be like, have my back. And we're just going to run this thing internally. And then, okay, when it's time to present, when it's time to, uh, show you know the governing bodies what we've been doing. Then we'll package up everything that we've done and and kind of use like those that kit bag. I love that phrase, that kit bag, those templates, those uh, fill in the blank um, docu- documents, right? Where we're not going to spend so many hours and days and weeks developing them. We're going to have a template and then just kind of fill in the blanks of what has happened throughout the project as we've been iterating through things. Sure, absolutely. Cool, man. So um, you guys at Chronicle now are helping people be productive in content discovery and collaboration. So tell us a little bit about that. Like what is the content discovery and collaboration problem that people are struggling with and maybe the um, the opportunities for unproductivity unpro- that they currently have <laughs> in, in their life and how Chronicle helps them? Sure. So um we're we're tackling this kind of problem in uh, in a couple of ways. So one is um, we have information. Inf- information is everywhere, and quite frankly, we're really poor at filtering the noise. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, you know, if we go to uh, you know professionals like us, we go to LinkedIn, we go to Facebook for news. We have various other sites that we either subscribe to via email lists or we get an RSS feed and, and we read that. Um, it's just there's just no way of, of managing that kind of information deluge or, or what I called on, on a recent post, the content tsunami, um, which is, you know, we're drowning in it um, and we get distracted by it. And, and at Chronicle, what we're doing is we're giving people a way of managing that information, you know, into a funnel um, that they control. So this is this is not an algorithm based tool like uh, Facebook or some others where, you are, I guess, pushed content um, based on your preferences and your behaviors. You are very much in control and control the tap as to what you want to see using your own filters and your own search queries and things like that. Um, and then the second, you know, in the second aspect is using content as a, a means to collaborate. So we find that content is is kind of pushed around a lot by communication channels so I, mean, I spoke to a client recently who had five different tools to to communicate content around the organization they had slack they had 
um, uh, Facebook at work, funnily enough. Um, they have email, they have SharePoint, um, they have uh, Salesforce chatter. And the, the problem that I see is, is that people just push, it's like pushing bits of paper around the desk, that analogy, you know, you're a paper pusher. People just push content around, but they don't actually use it as a means to be productive. Um, and so what we do at Chronicle is we create spaces where the focus is the content and you collaborate around that content. Um, so there's, there's two things that we're trying to address. One is to turn uh, the noisy world that we have right now into a more signal-based uh, uh, approach so you get the information that you really need. Um, and then when you have that information that you really need, you basically pop it into a space where you can start working on it and working with others around it. Man, uh, that's so true. Like the information overload, like the content tsunami just gets bigger. The waves are getting bigger and bigger every year, right? And yeah. and it doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur, like solopreneur working your own thing like I'm doing here at Hello Tech Pros or back as a manager in an in a IT organization in a big company. Um, there's so much information being pushed at you all the time. And sometimes we feel like I can't do a better job because I don't have the information. I can't do, uh, I, I can't be successful because the information's not out there. I have to go collect the data. Many times that I found that it's just the opposite. Like there's so much information coming at me. Like I can't prioritize and I can't keep track of what are the important things that I need to be focusing on and what is just like you said, the noise, right? That I need to filter mm. out. So how can a person really understand like what's the critical things that I do need to focus on? What are the critical things that my team does need to be collaborating on and then just remove everything else that doesn't fit in that category? Um, I think you need to be selective. Um, so again, like you say, there's, uh, you know, there's a deluge of information um, and there's uh, something which I, I kind of subscribe to, which is uh, the relevance paradox, it's called, which um, it, it's basically when a, an individual or a group are, are unaware of the in essential information that would guide them to make better decisions. Um, and, and as a consequence of which they, you know, they don't make the right decisions and it has consequences and, and they only seek out the information that they think is relevant. They don't actually have the broader picture. Um, and then we're trapped in, uh, because of the algorithms right now about, um, uh, we we're trusting machine learning and algorithms to, um, uh, to actually solve that problem. But what's happening is it's actually creating uh, a, a different kind of problem, a different kind of paradox. And that's um, what's known as the filter bubble, which is basically it's a result of algorithms guessing what we want to see based on our behavior, such as um, our past clicking of likes or our search history or where we are, where we are at this point in time uh, location-wise. Uh, and it just serves us many echo chambers um, or it creates artificial, you know, uh, mini e echo chambers. And I think that the, the best way to avoid that is, is to introduce the human back into the process again. And, and you become more selective about the information which you want to seek out um, and, and, and clean or, or almost uh, be so, uh, uh, disciplinarian about it, about cleaning up your your feeds, cleaning up the information sources, getting rid of the ones that no longer uh, suit you so it's no longer part of the noise and introducing new ones that will give you that broader picture as well. So there's a healthy balance there. Yeah. So there's a healthy balance of manual searching uh, and, and automation can work, but you don't rely on the automation. The automation is there to augment and, and help, but it doesn't drive or execute. Man, that's that's uh, great words of wisdom there. Like there, there's so many feeds that, or so many email lists or so many whatever that we subscribe to because at some point in our journey, like we thought that this was the answer, that this was going to add value in our lives. And maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But then how often do we go back through and purge those feeds? How often do we unsubscribe? How often do we put filters on people and say, you know what, that... Uh, that was for one part of my journey. I needed that information, but now like I passed it and it's just more noise and we mm. need to delete that. So when you're working with different businesses, right, we have kind of different cultures of, of different businesses. So maybe take us to the larger organization that has a lot of internal chatter, right? So we've got internal chatter versus external chatter. External, we're looking at 
other content out there on Facebook and on Twitter and on, uh, you know, all the industry leaders that we subscribe to. And then the internal chatter of just the employees themselves, right, of the, the conversations that are going on within the organization. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how we can filter or, or expand to the right the right channels of who we need to be listening to within the organization? Um, I think it's important to recognize um, expertise in the organization and who the best people to approach for that kind of insight. Um, they're the ones who I think they're, they're, they're the kind of signal amongst the noise. So when you, you know, when you're using internal chat tools and and, and uh, collaboration tools, no matter what they are, I think it's important to actually seek out who are the purveyors of the rich information and who are there, you know, just like on the external um, social media, who are the ones that just post memes and, you know, if we use that kind of, uh, you know, we use that kind of, sort of uh, imagery here, you know, who are the ones that just post memes and, and you know, um, uh, nonsense articles and stuff like that and who are the ones who are actually giving you real nuggets and insights of information or um, keeping you up to date with what's going on both in, internally and externally and it could be a competitor you know what's happening in the competitor sphere or it could be uh, uh, there's a, a n local news breaking story which actually affects the organization and it could present an opportunity like a business opportunity for example so there are you know there are people to avoid uh, and they're good for like lunchtime um, you know lunchtime fun discussions but from a productivity point of view you you really should filter those guys out um, and concentrate on the ones who are providing you real insight within the organization. Dude, that's that's hilarious because I actually used to work for a company. It was a uh, I won't name any names, but there's a <laughs> sports entertainment company who has a major office there in Edinburgh. So you might be able to figure that out. And <laughs> and uh, when I first logged on to the systems, when I first got hired. Um, you know, log into the Slack channels and they were just blown up with memes and like animated GIFs, like all yeah. day, every day, just piles of animated GIFs flowing in. And it wasn't like people were actually having conversations. It was just an animated GIF response to an animated GIF response <laughs> to an animated GIF. And, and it was like, I'm, I'm an old man, right? I'm like, I'm in my forties and, and some of this the 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 way that millennials communicate i don't get it and so i kind of like tune a lot of that out and so i'm putting my own filters on okay i gotta unsubscribe from this channel unsubscribe from this channel right only only open this up and and look at it at certain times a day and then honestly i would kind of miss things right and and things would happen in those channels and i'm ignoring them because i'm trying to filter out all the animated gifs and instead <laughs> uh, something happened a major decision or a major breakthrough and i was the last to know but i because i wasn't watching all those animated gifs and i was like right. what happened guys how, when did this come up like how come i didn't know they're like oh well, you weren't in that channel you didn't find out so how can how can we kind of balance this, right? Where we want to be plugged in, we want to be involved, and we want to know the, the actionable things that are going on, but, man, we don't want to get distracted by all the bouncy, shiny memes and <laughs> animated gifts. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the uh, my, my initial advice would be to, like you, like you just said, filter out and start switching off... Um, distracting notifications but like you know your your story there is just um you know it just shows you the the consequence of doing it to the end you know doing it mm -hmm. to the point where you get nothing at all um and and it's really uh, it's really difficult and and to be honest it, it can just be a a learning experience i mean you that's a perfect example of being able to turn that into something um, to show that, um, you know, guys, this was, you know, this channel was set up for a specific purpose. It turned into an absolute, um, you know, an absolute mess. Um, and therefore, it was no longer a productive way to communicate. And I missed something really important that, that could have driven a decision for me, um, you know, personally or professionally to do something, to act upon it. And, you know, I was no longer part of that um, that chain. Uh, and... I guess it, we can only learn by doing. We can't. Um, you know, we can. We can barely second guess that kind of scenario. Um, you, especially, like you say, if it just explodes into 
uh, noise and, and mm. memes and <laughs> gifts and stuff like that, then there's no way to know that buried in that, you know, buried in 2030 notifications, there was that one single line that had something that could have helped you do your job. Um, and I guess, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> save uh, sending everyone a direct message or setting up another another channel for example <laughs> you know then you just get that whole thing all over again and and it serves no one so i guess it has to be a a, a learning process or you employ someone to manage the channel you know and someone is there to curate the noise out for you and everyone sort of puts in their tastes in terms of well i want to see this specific information and and only that information um and yeah it, it, it can be really difficult i think um and companies i think are struggling now so i mean again that example where they're using five different tools you know to manage information flow that's just nonsensical to me um, i can't see how anyone can be productive because you're you're now looking you're now using a search criteria five times to try and find a piece <laughs> of information and if you don't find it in sharepoint you're scratching your head thinking did i see it in slack which Slack channel did I see it in? Right. Or did someone ping me it on Facebook at work? So you're going to search on there instead. And that's no way. That's no way to be productive. And there's certainly no way that I would want to work. Absolutely. It's tough, right? The more channels you have to subscribe, unsubscribe, search for. Uh, I know I saw that somewhere. Either I'm yeah. completely imagining it and I'm drawing a diagram in my head as I'm thinking through it, or I saw this diagram, I just can't find it and I want to find it. Uh, man, that's tough. So, Theo, in just a moment, maybe we could talk about the biggest uh, realizations that your clients have and how you're able to shift their thinking and shift their um, their productivity on the content that they kind of um, are now subscribing to and the, and the filters that they put on it. But first, let's take a quick break and thank our sponsors. Chad Bostic here, and I've got a very special announcement concerning next week. Next week is going to kick off my very first signature series week. That is one full week dedicated to a single course, a single topic. And that topic next week is career development, specifically my career hyperdrive course, how to get unstuck in your career and launch your career back into hyperspace. Now we're gonna have seven full days of content and what you're going to get out of it is motivation that you need to overcome your biggest career obstacles, productivity tips to help you crush it at work without killing your personal life, leadership training that will build your respect and influence across the organization without needing to move into the management tracks, a technology mastery blueprint that's going to guide you through the process of selecting the right technology for the right problem every time, social engineering hacks to break into the elite inner circles and get a seat at the adult table, entrepreneurship tactics that will raise your value and salary within your organization and increase your reputation and negotiation power to the marketplace, and the peace of mind to unplug from the job without anxiety or guilt. Now, if this sounds good to you, you do not want to miss any of the episodes next week. And you're going to want to sign up for the course, the online course, because... Uh, you're gonna get access to all of the takeaways and all of the homework sessions. There will be homework, you have to do the homework in order to get unstuck. You can't succeed just by listening. So go to hellotechpros.com slash career to sign up for the free course and get access to all the content. Again, that's hellotechpros.com slash career. Okay, we're back with Theo Priestley. Theo is the CEO of Chronicle Content Discovery and Collaboration Platform. What we've learned from Theo so far is that as a CEO of a company, dude, he is so much about uh, the agile methodology. So we love CEOs who, who are about the agile methodologies and not just about creating documentation for the sake of documentation. So a plus one, one up, thumbs up for Theo just on that. <laughs> and then really get into, into the, the productivity of information overload. And, and gosh, we all struggle with this. I, or at least I feel that I struggle with this in every environment that I'm in, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether it's on you know Facebook or just all the other the news, right? The news going on, the the elections that are going on here in the U.S. and the world news. It's just, there's so much information all the times, and so Theo's been giving us some great tips on like what to filter, how to filter it, and so forth. So. 
as you are working with your clients, Theo, like what are some of the big like aha moments that you've seen them have as they go, okay, we have these five different channels that we could be searching for a particular piece of content. Now, do we cut them down? Do we like literally take out Slack or we take out SharePoint or do we just find a better way to manage the, the content repositories? Yeah, I um, the way I kind of sort of push them uh, to the, towards that aha moment or the eureka moment is um, I ask them how, just how productive they are around that content. How do they execute um, or how do they measure that pr productivity? So, you know, we can communicate as much as we want using every other channel. We can be collaborative using different numbers of tools. But at the end of the day, you know, is there a goal in mind when they are doing something, when they are using that tool? Or is it just to, like I say, push the paper across the desk to something else or, or to someone else? Are we actually moving the work forward when we're using these tools? Or are we just, I guess, cluttering up, you know, the channel with, with more chat, with more noise, and the work is actually static? And I think that is the, um, the real aha moment is, is when they realize that using all these different tools doesn't actually move the work forward. It just keeps it fairly static and the conversation is all that happens then. That 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 to me is when they kind of have a light bulb and, and they say, okay, tell me more. How how does you know how does what you guys are doing at Chronicle and what does the platform do that helps us actually be productive and achieve an end goal? Yeah, I think so many times we kind of collect data, we collect content because we know that at some point down the line that, that that may be useful, right? Somebody could use this. Someone, right, regardless of if we're doing uh, a lot of documentation like we used to do back in the old waterfall days or if we're just in the fly, in the moment creating documents or creating content as we're asking people and getting answers. But we want to store all that information because it's going to be valuable at some point. But then how do we go back to it and how do we how do we use it again? Okay, now that we have all this content available to us, how can we really take action on it and use the content that's available instead of going out and asking the exact same questions again two years later that we asked, you know, when we kicked off this project two years ago and and really get to okay, well, here's here's all the things that we know instead of like starting from scratch. Does that does that make any sense to you? Yeah, I mean, some content will have, you know, stickiness and, and will last. Um, and other content um, and information will will literally just be like a point source for the particular problem or the project. And once that project is finished, it will never be used again. And I think the trick there is to recognize which is which mm -hmm. um, and which, you know, and, and obviously content evolves because, you know, as businesses move forward, um, content has to change. It'll have to be updated and things. And again, it's recognizing which of those um, sources of information um, will evolve as the business evolves and which of it was created to satisfy a need at that point in time and is done, has a shelf life. We shouldn't be looking at it. We shouldn't be storing it. We shouldn't be referring to it anymore. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's another kind of pain point and um, uh, I guess a, a learning curve for organizations because like you say, there is that kind of hoarding mentality where I'm going to keep this information because one day it might be useful and that day never ever comes, <laughs> but you're still clinging to it just in case. Just in case. Uh, yeah. And it, you know, let go, let go guys, you know, it's, uh, you know, recognize when, uh, when you can let it flap away in the wind and when, you know, or when you need it. So that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's another problem that w which we see. Um, uh, time and again, yeah, it's like it's like my content insurance, right? I'm going to hang on to this because <laughs> the uh, the price of the hard drive, the price of the storage, the price of the indexing um, is is small compared to when I need this information. That that value that it's going to bring me is huge. However, I have no idea if or when I'm ever going to need it again. And so, the more content I store onto, the more content I save and try to come back and search through later, just the more noise and mess there's going to be. So, uh, Theo, before we leave this conversation, before we wrap it up, do you have any final words of wisdom for our audience? And then share the best way that we can connect with you. And then we'll say goodbye. Sure. I mean, I guess uh, for me, it's um, be more selective about the information that you choose to consume. 
Second one would be um, make sure that you are um, either uh, getting the insight from it or you can create some insight that someone else can consume on top of that. So adding your own, I guess, your own thoughts and your comments and your own spin on, a, on, on content and articles and news that you, that you consume is actually a richer resource for the next person who wants to use it. Um, and I guess if we're going back to um, productivity, the, the other two, I guess, would be um, don't plan so much in advance because, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men, as they say, something's going to go wrong. So, you know, make the minutes count um, and, and just plan ahead that you need to, uh, uh, for things that you need to do in that moment, you know, in that particular hour or the next, uh, you know, or the next or to the next lunch break. Don't plan for the next week because things will always unravel. Um, and multitask um, with activities that I guess complement each other. Don't multitask for the sake of it. Um, and uh, you know, um, multitasking doesn't always work. So try and find the things that you can kill off um, by working them together, by working those activities together. Um, not disparate activities that that don't really naturally flow with each other. Um, so that's my those 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 are my kind of sort of golden nuggets, I guess. Um, and if you want to get in touch, well, uh, I'm all over the place. So um, I'm on Twitter. Um, you can connect with me there. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Um, I have a Facebook page, um, and I'm pretty open for um, to be contacted um, for these things. And of course, you can. Um, you might find me lurking around uh, on the Chronicle platform as well as I do my job. <laughs> Awesome. Theo, thank you so much for joining me on Hello Tech Pros today. I really value this story of, you know, what we, we, we live in an information society here that, that is just like constantly producing content all the time. And it's okay to feel like overwhelmed at some points, right? It's okay to feel like I missed something, like I'm missing out on some information or I'm subscribed to too much. And there's so many times we get told to subscribe to this channel, add this channel, add this channel to enhance your life and make your life more valuable, make your business more productive. But sometimes we just need to hear, no, you know what? We need to scrap it. We need to cut down. We need to filter out and that's okay. You're not gonna hurt anybody's feelings. So thank you for sharing that with me today. <laughs> Uh, it's been a pleasure, Chad. Thank you. You bet. Tech pros, man, let me tell you something personal. Like I have struggled in the past with being an information hoarder and I feel like, or I have felt like over the course of my career, over the course of my life, that if I just had all the information, like if I could collect it all, then like these big, huge aha moments would come and I would know the exact right product to build or software to build or how to do things correctly. And many times that just reading all the articles and listening to all the podcasts it was good information, but if you don't act on it, if you don't actually take massive action and put something into practice, like all that information is just, it's just taking up space in your brain, taking up space on your computer and on your phone. It's not doing anybody any good. So yeah, collect it, read it, listen to it, understand it, but then take action on it, right? So just like going back to the, to the waterfall versus agile methodology, the reason I'm so such a big proponent on that, and I feel that I, uh, you know, Theo's resonates with this is because if you're not, if you're not taking action on the information, if you're not taking guesses and just putting something into place and putting proof of concepts out there and seeing what's going to happen, then all that information is just kind of worthless, right? It doesn't really matter. It's not a adding any value. So collect your information, filter it, decide what's the best, but then take an action on it and actually implement it and see what works. And then whatever your findings are, then you can publish that and somebody else can subscribe to it. You've been listening to Theo Priestley and I'm Chad Bostic. And until next time, take care. The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 177. Do you use Slack for team communication? Join the Hello Tech Pros Slack channel at hellotechpros.com slash slack. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, subscribe to this channel, and check back tomorrow. This has been Productivity Tuesday, but tomorrow my featured guest and I are talking about leadership. Thursday, technology. Friday, people in communication. Saturday, entrepreneurship. Sunday, being unplugged. Monday, motivation. 
And then we do it all over again next Tuesday for productivity. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.